Hey, Doug. Hi, hey, how are you? Um, so I'm going to talk about the uniforms of the American Army during the era from the end of the Civil War up until the Spanish-American War. When the war ended, there was tons of military surplus, a lot of stuff left over from the Civil War. They didn't need new stuff. It was all good enough. So when the Indian Wars started in 1865 with the westward expansion, guys went armed as they had been in the Civil War. By about 1870, they realized that the stuff was getting a little long in the tooth. It was getting a little worn out. They were starting to experiment with new guns, and they had really figured out that the uniforms weren't functional. So the U.S. government formed a board to design clothing and equipment to make them a modern army. And their idea was, let's show the world how up-to-date we are, how fashionable, and how great we are. Unfortunately, the Ordnance Board of 1872 made every single decision wrong. There wasn't a right decision they made, other than the fact that they needed new stuff. So in 1872, they came out with a new blouse. It's pleated. It's thick, heavy wool, lots of buttons. Imagine trying to chase the Sioux in, in North Dakota wearing this. It was wrong. In addition to their tunic being wrong, they created the world's worst hat. They decided this was a very fashionable hat to wear. Well, you can also convert it. You can wear it as a hat. It's stupid looking. And when it got wet, the brim drooped, it was oversized, and it was hated by the men. So often, if you look at the pictures uh, from the time period, you won't find these so often because the guys hated them and they just bought civilian hats or old military surplus hats. The clothing board and ordinance board also said, we need to issue a mess kit. Let's come up with a great mess kit. I don't know about you, but this is the worst mess kit design ever. It was supposed to be used as your coffee cup. It was supposed to be your frying pan. I don't know how you fry in it. I don't know how you use it for anything, but this is another example of the 1872 board getting it all wrong. They also realized that a, a new and updated bayonet might be needed. So we've been using these bayonets, these triangular bayonets. They were fine during the Civil War, but they said, we need a new bayonet. Let's use a bayonet that doubles as a trowel. Well, because it's a bayonet, it can go on the rifle. And you put it on the rifle, and you start digging with it like a shovel, and the men bent the barrels. And the soldiers got in trouble for bending their barrels, but they're like, you gave us a bayonet that we can put on our rifle to dig with. What were you thinking? So they made a lot of really, really bad choices. They also thought this was a combat loadout. So I think it's uh, 16 rounds. That's all you need to go into combat. You're going to chase Sitting Bull with 16 rounds of ammunition. So the men hated this stuff. They started coming up with their own homemade cartridge belts like these, uh, often referred to as fair weather Christian belts. A true Christian would, check, would trust the government that you only needed 16 rounds of ammunition. But a fair weather Christian might need to make his own cartridge belt that has loops sewn on it. Uh, so a lot of things were being made locally by, by guys. So that's 1872. By 1874, they realized that every decision they made was wrong, and they went back to the drawing board and came up with a new uniform and set of uniforms. Mm. And it was really much harkening back to the Civil War. The blouse adds one more button. It's now a five-button blouse. It's got piping around the collar, but otherwise it's very much the same blouse that was being worn in the Civil War. They were still basically using Civil War trousers. They started issuing hats. Uh, this is an 1876 hat. Uh, it had some vents, but otherwise, in other ways, it's a Civil War type hat. They also updated the hat. The Civil War kepi is a little tall in the front and fairly vertical in the back. The 1872 wasn't that bad. It's a little bit shorter. It's a little bit flatter. Um, but basically, they had to kind of go back to the drawing board and come up with new gear that would work better. 1884, they updated again. There's some more materials. You'll see a lot more canvas being used. They also started acknowledging that if you're in Arizona, you might not need the wool. So they started issuing canvas units. 
The canvas uniforms. This is the 1884 canvas fatigue uniform. And it was really meant for doing work, but they were being worn in the field by guys. Um, and they started adding insignia to them and trying to make them into uniforms. Uh, by the Spanish-American War, these were still being used in large numbers, even though a new pair of canvas trousers was being issued. Uh, canvas was becoming more popular for uniforms by the 1880s and into the 1890s, although world uniforms still predominated even up till World War II. Hmm. So, uh, but you'll find that the uniforms adjusted by the 1890s. You don't have a lot of major changes happening. Uh, one of the big improvements is the cartridge belt. This is the cartridge belt for the Craig Jorgensen. All the rest of these are for Springfield trap doors. This one will hold 100 rounds of ammunition. Every loop can hold two cartridges. There's 50 loops. That's a lot of ammunition you can carry with you on your belt. Uh, and they worked pretty well. The one thing that really didn't change was the canteen. The Civil War canteen to the 1872 canteen to the 1890s canteen, they're all basically the same. And it's not until uh, the edge of World War I, I think it was 1910, when we moved to the more standard canteen that we think of as a classic canteen. They changed the straps, but otherwise they're the same size, the same shape, and they basically work. Mm -hmm. um, there are a couple of mess kit designs that change. Obviously the, the meat can from 72 was a failure. This is probably the most popular one that kept coming out. Uh, it was a flat meat can. Um, you can't hold a lot, but it's a great plate and it's a great frying pan. Mm -hmm. And it's not that different from the World War I and World War II models of frying pans that were being used. Mm -hmm. Doug, I have a question. Sure. Just, I always wondered, why did they make those ke kepi hats that style? What's the purpose of that? Uh, well, it's a fashion. Um, it's coming out of Europe. It's a European fashion. Right. Uh, there's a third style that's called the bummer cap, um, which is even taller and floppier. I don't see uh, Dave's bummer So it's even taller. Oh. But... Um, they, they were just essentially a fatigue cap, and they weren't they weren't supposed to be formal, but they work. They've got a bill. They keep the sun off your face. Um, but they're they're functional. But they're kind of kind of strange by yeah, design. Yeah, sure. But you know, in many ways, they're a baseball cap. I'm following. Yeah. You know, everything is either a baseball cap or a cowboy hat. Right. right. Hey, thank you, Doug. Appreciate You're it. Thank you. Thank you.